It's set up Monday. Let's take a look at some charts for Brave New Coin here. ETH, BTC, alts really having their day in the sun here, as is expected in Q2 when alts do extremely well historically. The big thing everybody's going to be talking about this week is the Coinbase direct listing, similar to an IPO, but not exactly like an IPO. It has the coin ticker on NASDAQ, and it appears as though Bitcoin and ETH are sort of just looking at each other, waiting to see what happens with this Coinbase thing. Maybe it's a catalyst. Maybe it isn't. Maybe people don't care about it. Maybe price discovery is a a crowded trade up here. I'm going to go through the reasons why I don't think it's a crowded trade for BTC and ETH up here, especially in the heels of alt strength, which, you know, if everything else was dumping around BTC and ETH, I would be a little less bullish. But to see everything moving up as BTC and ETH consolidate and BTC goes back and forth between 58, 59, 60, 61 K, it's hard to be bearish up here. It really is. It really is hard to be bearish for me up here. Um, so yeah, Coinbase listing, going to be a big deal. Everybody's going to be talking about it. Definitely a must see event, April 14th, US time. So that's going to affect the markets, obviously. Huge deal. The biggest one of the biggest IPO, not it's not people keep saying IPO and people give people flack for calling it an IPO. It's not, but you know, effectively it is. <laughs> so let's just all agree to disagree that it, it's an IPO. It's just easier to say that than direct listing and then have to explain what the differences are between a direct listing and an IPO. They're getting a ticker. It's a big deal. It's the first crypto company, arguably, in the US that represents crypto. Coin to many people in legacy world, Coinbase is the equivalent of crypto they hold a bajillion i think it's 22 billion in um crypto in custody not on their balance sheet anyway it's a big deal all right let's get to the charts so if i was on a deserted island which is really where i'd rather be when i'm trading this stuff because news events historically for me i don't trade them well so i just don't but if i'm in a deserted island and i'm looking at this chart it's an ascending triangle 25 times out of 10 And this has a bullish bias. Now, that doesn't mean that it's a slam dunk trade. It just means the expectation is strongly going to be to the upside here. And if we measure this out, as we do any chart pattern, we take the highs, we take the lows, gives us a 1618 and a measured move, which is a 2x this length to the upside between 70 and 76. It's really just that simple. Um, People often look at volume and think that dead volume is bad or bearish or whatever. Not really. I mean, all it represents is just indecision and people waiting on the sidelines. You know, there's nothing going on here, right? It's just ranging, 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 tighter and tighter and tighter at a horizontal resistance. And this paints a well-known pattern called the ascending triangle, which has a bullish bias. It's really that simple. Descending volume is part of that. And it's an important part of any chart pattern that matches the consolidation period. You know, you don't want volumes like all over the place here. You, This is what you want to see. You want to see volume dropping off a cliff and you want to see an explosion in volume to confirm the breakout, which we haven't seen just yet. So, you know, maybe my horizontal isn't high enough. You know, maybe there's actually horizontal at like 61K, but nevertheless, looks like that's what it is. We can even go to the eight hour or four hour. The time frames are relevant, honestly. It's, that's one of the most difficult things to convey to new traders and to me coming in when I was b- beginning to trade. The biggest thing I wanted to know was, okay, what time frame is the best? It's not really like that. It's more about zooming in or zooming out. So if we zoom in and we look at the eight hour or the four hour, or the six hour, look at whatever you want. We're also printing an ascending triangle, which to a lot of people, they're immediately going to go red flag. You can't get it or sorry, inverted head and shoulders. They're immediately going to go. You can't have an inverted head and shoulders at the top. It's supposed to be a bullish reversal, not bullish continuation. Well, you know what? We see patterns all over the place for whatever reason. It doesn't matter. Don't even think of it as a pattern. Fine. In any case, it represents a lack of bearishness. We had an inverted head and shoulders here that made a little more sense coming off a dump. It's, you can't, you can't draw a bearish pattern here. You just can't. Like you can't zoom in, can't zoom out. I, I'd like to see some sort of counter narrative for this. I just, I can't find one. Here's the cloud. Cloud looks great. TK lines are tight together. That's what you want to see if you expect continuation, trend continuation. 
The one caution or pause here on the decision tree is a potential going into May, late April, a potential bearish edge to edge move, which everybody should continue to watch. I'll be watching it. It's a decent short trade, short trade setup. If we get a candle close on the daily time frame in the cloud, that is a short entry signal with a target on the other edge of the cloud, somewhere around 41, 40K, something like that. If this, then that. If we get a break here, we expect a touch here. There's no short trade to be taken until then. Look at this trend, right? You're buying the dips, you're buying the Kijun every time. If, even if we go to 47 or 51, whatever this is here, whatever the Kijun is, you know, that's still a buy. It doesn't matter. You know, it's still a buy. Really, the cloud is your stop loss. So even a buy at 51 with a stop loss at 49 or whatever it is, is still the trade I'd rather be taking than trying to short this up here. On the pitchfork, we are nearing the top of the pitchfork nearing very nearing um overbought territory but if we break out if we break out of this entirely then it's three to four weeks of absolute insanity um the last time we broke out to the upside of a pitchfork we went from 2k to 20k in btc terms uh usd in 2017 so that is an extremely strong signal eth is above its pitchfork on the usd chart already all this is showing is this is a rate of change Here's the trend. Trend likes to live in here. If it goes above this, then it's a whole different ball game, right? And again, you can see volume since January, just absolutely dropping off a cliff. So even more so than just this pattern here, just entirely dropping off. We can look at it another way. We can say, okay, let's turn on some sort of sideways indicator, which is what I call it, some sort of consolidation measurement. Um, this is Bollinger Bands. It looks at the standard deviation within a certain period of time. So if we look at the past 20 days, we look at the standard deviation above and below the mean. We can say, okay, is this getting tighter or wider contraction or expansion? If price is above the 20 SMA, it projects a bullish continuation bias or a bullish breakout bias, and you'll see the B bands expand. So far, they are sort of maintaining their caliber. They aren't necessarily expanding or contracting, but they are beginning to lean up another bullish continuation, bullish bias sort of thing. The problem with all of this is that if we don't do anything until the Coinbase thing, then whatever happens, whatever the fallout is, whatever the catalyst is for that, good or bad, you know, if people sell the news, sell the uh, BTC based on the Coinbase listing, you know, who knows, right? Everybody's bullish. That's not saying it's a crowded trade. Just saying, watch out, right? This is like NFP, if you're familiar with FX sort of stuff. Most of us think it's wildly bullish, but nevertheless, expect absolute shenanigans and volatility you know whipsaws lightsabers darth mauls whatever you want to call it stuff's going to go wild um eth usd again it's above its previous all-time high it's above its consolidation it continues to print higher lows um it looks like it's ready for new all-time highs it looks like it's ready for price discovery fees on chain have come way down as people are beginning to gamble on bsc so DeFi is taking a back seat at the moment you know, the functionality of it, not necessarily the prices, but at the end of the day, all that's just going to, should help ETH price, you know, theoretically. So if I, again, if I'm on my deserted island, if I just see this chart, if all I get is one candle a day, I get coconuts and a candle a day, and I got to draw it in the sand, I'm expecting bullish continuation here, regardless of what's going on externally in the world. Again, descending volume. So 2,500 to 2,800, and that, that's a target I'd expect this week for for sure cloud looks excellent for eth um tk lines tight again you have this remote possibility of an edge to edge short trade sometime late in the month early may from 18 to 14 or thereabouts i'm adding on any dips here with a stop loss in the cloud you can see we haven't touched the cloud really since we haven't touched the cloud since we broke above the cloud in october and that's when the trend started this is when it says it's go time TK cross above the cloud. So until the TK cross is bearish or we are in the cloud again, I am buying every single dip that happens on ETH because that's what the trend tells me to do. If we're above the cloud, we're buying buying the dips all day long. So realistically, you'd be buying, or I, I want to be buying if I'm buying again, somewhere between 18, 1850 with a stop loss around 1600 in the cloud there. Pretty straightforward, decent setup. And again, your targets to the upside would remain 2,500 plus.
EPTC pitchfork, not really much has changed. Uh, last week it was basically flat, um, as ETH and BTC both just went sideways, sort of in consolidation mode, holding pattern. Over time, I do expect continued bullish vibes for this chart with a uh, median line touch probably somewhere in May, maybe June, you know, just like it has before. And then there's a real potential of this to actually flip bullish for the first time in the latter half of uh, 2021 because it'll be above the cloud most likely at that time. Now, if this breaks below the pitchfork, if it breaks below the cloud, if it breaks below this yearly pivot support pivot, then ETH is a failed experiment and BTC wins. Right? <laughs> I don't expect that to happen, but that's what you'd be looking at. Anything below 028 at this point um, is just game over for ETH. Maybe it means Binance won or something. I don't know. But the point is definitely bullish here. Sideways up for ETH throughout 2021. Um, BNB, you know, I don't really know what to say or talk about for BNB at this point. Um, I wanted to do an isolated video on BNB for a few weeks now but I was waiting on their Q1 burn numbers because those are likely massive. Uh, if you're unaware, they burn BNB, the token, every quarter based on the previous quarter's profits or some made-up number, right? <laughs> like, it's changed a bit. But the point is they have a quarterly burn, so I was waiting on that. Uh, nevertheless, it broke out in a big, big way on the USD pair kind of late January, February, and then just this narrative took over once the Binance Smart Chain exploded as the ETH fees exploded. So people migrated from ETH to BSC to do their gambling and their yield farming and just casino stuff. And the token has appreciated immensely. Currently between, you know, if I'm measuring this as a flag or something, it's basically at its target. Anything more is, is a bonus. 2618 to 3618. You know, does this hit 1,000? Does it 2x from here? That'd be pretty nuts, um, but kind of par for the par for the course so far this year. You know, if you zoom way out, the March thing on every chart is just like a blip, right? At the end of the day, this probably more so than anything just represented a massive consolidation period. Now, you don't necessarily know that at the time, but as early as July 2020, you know, you had that bullish 5200 cross again. So if you really wanted to, you could be long all the way back here. You could add anything above that resistance, you know, added any of the touches here. But the point is, trend-wise, this looked good in well in advance of whatever's happening now. You know, this is just a side effect of continued bullish momentum, a continued bullish narrative, the Coinbase exchange listing, DeFi stuff. Like, the list goes on and on and on. But all this stuff is just a product of trend was already bullish and we're seeing what actual bullish momentum looks like for stuff like this. Just absolute euphoria and sanity. Um, Monero quietly, I don't see anybody talking about this at all anywhere, but Monero looks ready for an all-time high retest. Again, if you look at 2020, 2019, 2020, it just looks like a giant consolidation for Monero that turns out to be a white coffee and accumulation pattern, just like on a lot of these charts. Um, OMG, NEO, I'm not going to talk about them in the video, but the charts look just like this, where it's just, okay, you know, we we broke a series of resistances from 2019 and 2020. It's just markup, markup, markup. None of this looks bearish. Everything looks like it's going to retest all-time highs on the USD pairs. Um, LTC is another one. I'll get to that in a second. Um, but LTC looks good. If we use the um, one-year MA multiplier and we look at back testing, historically it was pretty good at picking the highs in 2016, 2017, 2018, you know, this is a little different than maybe BTC where we get an extreme high and then it's, that's it, right? This is just a series historically on backtesting of highs. Now, I don't necessarily expect that again, but it's a caution to maybe not treat the extreme overbought conditions as the end, right? So that's where I will be getting rid of some of my Monero at anything above this uh, MA multiplier. So it's 5x the one year MA multiplier. It's currently 620. That's a new all time high, kind of a 2x from here. So, you know, all this stuff, <laughs> it's hard to look at any of this stuff and think it's bearish. Here's the LTC's one year MA multiplier. And again, in 2017, you can see it, it had its day in the sun, it had its overbought territory. So I'm back testing. This looks good. You know, the, the downside, the, the buy zones are brutal and vicious, but 
they weren't wrong, right? <laughs> like they caught, they told you where to buy. It was a pretty fair um, assessment, honestly, zoomed way up. So I like 459, you know, plus 459 plus. It's important to, to say that because that's going to increase, uh, continue to increase day after day. Now, these not, might not look great on the BTC pairs or the ETH pairs, but on the USD pairs where retail is watching this stuff, all this looks great. Um, uni breaking out as well on big volume. Um, I just wanted to show this because this is an example of what people are looking for and expecting when they see a consolidation breakout. This is on the four hour. You just want to see massive volume come in. And um, that's what we're expecting with BTC and ETH, certainly. That's what I'm expecting with BTC and ETH. And XRP's, you know, what, what, do, what do I even say about XRP that makes any sense at all? Um, yeah, I didn't take the trade. It's not for me. I, can, I probably can't even trade it anywhere other than Kraken, but as a U.S. citizen. Um, but as far as technicals are concerned, again, Des Deserted Island, not paying attention to news, SEC, whatever. The fact that it's got tons of coins in circulation that continues to enrich Ripple, the company. It has gone past its 1618 and measured move from the 2020 highs. And it's in the 2618, 2618, 3618 territory at a buck 70. Um, you'll know that we're full euphoria insanity if this actually breaks a new all time high. If this breaks um, 240, 280, you know, then it's, we're in, <laughs> we're in anybody's guess where this stuff could go. I mean, we, I talked about it at the beginning, BTC 10xing from 2K. Imagine 10xing from 70K, right? BTC. You know, no one's talking about that. People are talking about super cycle, but. Nobody's talking about 10xing from 70k. You know, that's that's the kind of thing if <laughs> if Ripple pulls new all-time highs, I'm sort of expecting just absolute absolute insanity, euphoria, you know, in a good way. None of that is sustainable and in, in three or four weeks it'll all be done and it'll all collapse on itself. But in the meantime, everybody's gonna have a lot of fun. So if you want to see how I'm trading all of this stuff, you can pop on over to Enzyme. There's a link in the description of this video. Enzyme.finance looks like they're having a little trouble right now, but um, this is a fund where I trade transparently. It's got 4 million AUM. Um, you can see all the trades I make and when. So a few days ago I had million and change USD that I moved to BTC. So this is a non-custodial portfolio management tool. You can effectively copy trade um, the trades that I take on this fund. You can see deposits, withdrawals, you can see depositors, you can see all this stuff and you connect a MetaMask or equivalent wallet and you can participate if you'd like or just watch me and you know trade, counter trade me or whatever you want to do. Um, we also are in the early processes of getting AUM into the managed DeFi portfolio. Um, this is just an initial list. This isn't by any means the full list. There's 15 to 20 DeFi related altcoins that I'm looking to trade or get into. Um, this is a little less discretionary than the BTC and ETH fund, but nevertheless, it is a DeFi portfolio that I will have my hand in. So you can check that one out as well. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks for getting us 10K subscribers and happy trading.